so here are all the turbos disassembled. Basically all the compressor housings are sitting on the table by themselves in the center cartridges. Well, technical term basically. This is the CHRA. It's a center housing rotating assembly which is basically all the moving parts in one. So, I mean obviously from the get-go you can tell that the Turbonetics one here is much big, bigger compared to the uh, the 20Gs. So, in a quick rundown on Mitsubishi turbos, they the technical term is different compared to Garrett and other companies. But um, basically, the the 20G portion, the 20G portion is the compressor housing. It's the compressor wheel, the housing style, the size, and all that is the same. So since this is a 20G and the Godspeed is a 20G, theoretically these both should be the same, but they're not. The Godspeed one is machined weird. It's some different spec. It's supposed to be a 20G. It's very close, but it's off by one millimeter. And the TDO6 portion is the exhaust side. So they have TDO... The most common ones that you hear of on cars is TDO4, TDO5, TDO6. So this is the TDO6. This is a larger version. The TDO5 would be better paired with an SR since the SR is a smaller displacement engine. But since I'm running this on a KA, I want to have a bigger exhaust housing um, to get more of the exhaust out. But um, so as you can see, this is the the Kamac billet wheel. And very very nice machining on it. And these are I don't know if you can see, but these are the extended tips. These are much taller than the Godspeed ones, which result in more airflow. As you can see side by side, the Kemac billet wheel is about a centimeter taller, which obviously if you think about it, you're definitely going to get more air pulled through the turbo and compressed into the engine. And uh, well, since I'm there, same thing on the exhaust side. I mean, you can see like the surface area on the Kamak Turbo is much greater than on the Godspeed, and basically, um, you just get a quicker spool. Just to put it in basics, more exhaust gas hits each blade, spinning it, less mass, less uh, weight to, to have to to move to rotate up to whatever the RPM is, which is over 100,000. The cool thing about um, these turbos, or the Kamak turbos, is if you were to actually take a look at the Tomais and the Gretis, the Tomais and the Gretis are basically the same as this. I mean, they still run the 11 blade wheel, uh, cast aluminum compressor wheel. So you're basically getting um, like a basic turbo for in between $1,500 $1,800. Or you can pick up this Kamak Turbo, which is um, pretty much good technology. You get a nine-blade wheel made out of uh, Inconel 713 alloy, and you get aircraft grade 7000 series billet aluminum compressor wheel, which these turbos end up running a few hundred less than the Tomais and the Gretti. So if you think about it, you're getting way more bang for your buck going with the Kamak quality turbo. I mean, if you can actually compare the two, I would. I wish I. I wish I had a, a Tomai the 7960 turbo, which is the exact same as the 20G. But I mean, I'm not gonna spend 1,600 bucks just to uh, compare it on a video when I already have a much better turbo sitting right here in front of me. And um, so here is the Turbonetics turbo, and I mean, you can see this is a fairly large-looking turbo. Surface area looks similar on this turbo as to it does on the Kamak, but I mean, still the Kamak has much more surface area per blade. You can see how far the blades go in there. I mean, they're much, much taller due to that small uh, bolt head for the shaft. But um, and there's a lot of technical terms involving turbos. Um, compressor turbine wheel trims. That's a little too technical, I'm not going to get into that. But I will give you a quick rundown on AR. So before I get into AR, 
I'm going to quickly explain to you the different flange types. Um, this one here is a T2 flange, which is basically just, it pretty much means it's this size, which compared to this one here, the Turbonetics, like I said before, is a T3. So the size difference is pretty obvious. I mean, like the the port here is much larger. Obviously, get more more exhaust through there, and the bolt spacing is a lot wider. But the manifold that I'm running is a T2 T2 manifold. So I obviously can't run a T3 on it. So I just decided to stick with a T2. The stock T25 here is a T2 um, manifold, and then off after the T3 is a T4, which is the largest the largest flange type available and that thing's pretty pretty big I mean you'll run those on V8s or high horsepower cars where they're just running massive amounts of boost and as for AR AR is a little complex to say the least I mean there's tons of different different ARs and each one have their own specific application but usually the lower the AR the faster the spool time but you sacrifice top end mainly because you have a smaller area here smaller area you can't get as much exhaust out but the cool thing about having a lower AR is basically like a water hose having an adjustable nozzle if you tighten up the nozzle at the tip you get more velocity coming out the other end which is basically the same thing that you're doing with the AR the smaller the AR the tighter the nozzle is so the exhaust gases that come after it are just shooting out at high velocity which causes the turbo to spin up to spool up really quickly but I mean there's only so much exhaust that you can get through a small nozzle which is the downside of having a lower AR but once you start moving up to a larger AR let's say this one was a like a 1.07 AR this area here would be much larger allowing you to flow more exhaust gas out but um, as in, in return same thing with the hose you can get more water out but it comes out at a lower velocity causing the, the turbo not to spool up as fast as you would with a uh, smaller AR but as a result you can get more exhaust gas out which means you get a lot more top end the lower the number let's say 0.63 as opposed to 1.07 uh, the 0.63 will give you a faster spool time but it'll sacrifice top end because you have a smaller area to get the exhaust gases through. But the higher the number, the better your top end is, but you're going to have more lag, obviously, because you have to fill up that volume to be able to spin up that turbine. But um, So you basically have to give and take. So if you want a good streetable car, usually go with the lower AR. So you want to be able to just hit the gas and just take off, hit boost relatively quick, not have to wait seconds for the boost to hit and then all hell breaks loose like on most Supras but um so yeah so I decided to go with the lower AR which is what this housing is this um the Kamak housing is a uh, 8 centimeter square housing like I said um Mitsubishi is a little weird with their or Mitsubishi is different with their the way they, they they write everything out or their numbers but they don't go by decimal points they go by 8 centimeter squared so it's actually um, 8 centimeters squared inside here at the smallest point is the area and then obviously the radius but uh, converted to AR it ends up being a 0.57 AR so it's an even um, smaller AR than the turbonetic so it will get a faster spool